Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Uh, this is part two for this news bulletin today. I recommend checking out my website. I got all my videos there from back to all the way to 2009. GGNonline.com. Also, if you'd like to donate, you can do it there. On YouTube, it's uh, DDarko2012. And my backup channel is DDar DDarko2013. Okay, so we're talking about trends and brainwashing, social engineering of the masses. And this next article I have up is, Could the Bizarre Bagel Head Look Be Japan's Most Extremely Beautiful Trend Yet? National Geographic's Taboo shows three, uh, three people having saline infusions to create the look inspired by the breakfast favorite. So, um, yeah, they're talking about injecting saline into the forehead, then pressing the center of the swollen area with a thumb is a hit in the country's underground body modification scene. So, body modification scene. Hmm. The results of the two-hour treatment last just 16 to 24 hours, after which the saline is absorbed by the body, and the forehead reduces back to its normal size. So, great, right? Looks like a big butthole. But hey, you never know. You know, it, it could catch on, and people will do it, because other people are doing it. Did fix-a-flat butt injections kill a woman? This was from July, almost August, of 2012. That's right. The guy was charged with manslaughter. Cops say... She injected women with fix-a-flat and cement. Then next up, student debt weighs down one-fifth of the United States households, a record number of American households carrying student loan debt, while the average outstanding loan balance is highest it's ever been, according to a new report from Pew. They found that about one in five or 20% of households uh, were burdened with student debt in 2010. The figure is more than double the 9% it was in 1989, and it marks a big jump from 15% in 2007. So all that money should go towards education and illumination and a higher intelligence, higher literacy, higher pr productivity, right? Harvard losing out to South Dakota in graduate pay from September 19th. And Harvard University's graduates are learning less than those from the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology after a decade-long commodity bull market created shortages of workers as well as minerals. It says those leaving the college of 2,300 students this year got paid a median salary of 56000 And it goes on, it says at Harvard, where tuition fees are almost four times higher, they got $54,100. Those scheduled to leave the campus in Rapid City, South Dakota, and May are already getting offers at a time when about one in 10 recent U.S. college graduates is out of work. But, uh, you know, back in the day, most, most average people, I mean, I don't even know how much there was a middle class for most of our history. Probably not much. It was usually just rich and poor, right? Um, so middle class, the idea of a middle class isn't very long term as far as history goes in hindsight. And um, so it's, you know, usually it's for the elites and, and, and better off, right? And then now you have, like, the, the rest of the middle class, whatever, I guess you can call it, the middle class that's left, um, just struggling to get by and, and, and try to maintain their standard of living. They, it's all about sending their kids off to college. Well, they don't pay for it. Most of them, they just take on the debt, you know, or they put away or something like that for it. But either way, what is, either way, what is it for? You know, it's, um, it's conditioning them, right? Top 10 party schools ranked by Playboy. So it's all about the party, 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 right? Ratings based on sex, sports, and nightlife and also identifies worst school in each three uh, categories. So BYU ranks last in nightlife. So what, what is it about? It's about brainwashing the future. It's about, um, it, that's why you wear like a little square on your head. You want to do things by the square. And um, that gives you nice little boundaries, you know, uh, so as far as your thinking goes. You don't want to think outside the box. That's why they put a big uh, square on top of your head when you graduate. And so they'll go out to their jobs and they'll think everything's great, which is their life is, uh, their whole life is supposed to be one about uh, racking up humongous amounts of debt and living beyond your means. And of course, to keep partying, student 20 almost dies from poisoning after an alcohol enema. I couldn't believe this when I first saw it. I'm like, wow, a college frat party. He was brought to the hospital unconscious. So this is at a fraternity house. Uh, he says here he's rushed to the hospital unconscious after a rubber tube is inserted into his rectum and alcohol alcohol poured in. So, awesome. So yeah, I mean that's that's the thing, right? It's all about um, it's all about being part of the group and being accepted. So, but that's why I'm glad I did my military service before I went to college because I saw all of the the partying going on and I went to a couple of them once in a while because I knew a friend that. 
that knew some people that were throwing the parties, but for the most part, I just did my college. I tried to get good grades, and I got the fuck out of there. Uh, because I noticed that most of the people there were kind of just, they didn't really take it serious at all, especially when you'd have an opportunity to get up and talk in front of the class, um, and, you know, and, and talk about something serious. Uh, most people didn't even pay attention. Thorpe Park to breathalyze students to stop drunks causing six shutdowns on the roller coasters. Park has been uh, seeing a 250% increase in people being sick during the infamous Student Freshers Week. Theme park managers are taking the drastic measure of breath testing students after too many have vomited on roller coasters while drunk or hungover during the first week of university. And something many of you have already seen or heard of, Agenda 21 Micro Apartment Scheme beta tested in New York City. It's a globalist design from micro apartments. is being championed by, of course, New York uh, Mayor Bloomberg. The studio and one-bedroom apartments will be no bigger than 275 to 300 square feet. These tiny living spaces are smaller than currently allowing by building regulations, according to the statement. It says, however, the zoning regulations will be waived in order to construct the compact and stack them house models in the city-owned area of Kipps Bay. Of course, herding and expanding populations into dense areas with smaller living spaces will define a new class of poor and prepare their psychological transition towards accepting the Agenda 21 mega city concept. Remember we were talking about Bernays about controlling the masses, right? That's how they do it. According to the globalists at America 2050, they actually have their own website about these mega cities. Metropolitan regions, they call them regions, and they already have them all planned out, will be an interlocking economic system, or blocks, shared natural resources and ecosystems and common transportation systems link these population centers together. But the most recent news is in San Francisco. Similar programs are slated for the city where developers are currently seeking state approval for rentals as small as 150 square feet. These apartments would be the size of a parking space. So under the guise of addressing the 42% of residents in San Francisco who live alone, a developer said that uh, the maximization of space meets the needs of the demographic. Again, going back to that video where they were showing pictures and footage of the World's Fair, they were talking about a futuristic city. You've seen the little off-ramps and everything look like today, the modern. That was, what, back in the early 1900s. So, but, you know, I hate to say it, but most people, including myself, are going to be used to this anyways, living in smaller, smaller areas and stuff like that, just because you can't afford it. I mean, that's what it comes down to, and... It doesn't really seem like it's going to get better down the road, and they've probably been preparing us since the time we were born, uh, in my generation at least, or our generation in the early 80s, we've probably already been groomed to accept this, to seeing the, the economy degrade and standards of living degrade and stuff like that. So they already, I mean, the social engineers won't know what they're doing. That's why they always attack you when you're young. Spanish authorities are locking up trash cans to prevent people from foraging for food. So this is just typical stuff that you would expect from the state, right? I said, here's how bad the economic crisis has gotten in Spain, according to New York Times. So pervasive is the problem of scavenging. See, I don't like that word, scavenging. People call it, it's like dumpster diving, right? And it says that the one Spanish city has resorted to installing locks on supermarket trash bins as a public health precaution. See, they always say that as a, as a health Precaution. Remember, I was talking about this about um, about anything that they say is good for the uh, going to be good for the public for public safety is usually bad. I mean, it means they'd rather have people starve to death than than actually take a fucking chance and eat out some garbage that's going to be thrown away and eaten by fucking maggots. So you see, you see the irony there, dude. You know, like what I was saying, it's all about liability. Oh, well, we don't want to be liable liable if you get sick. Well, dude, if someone some poor schlub tries to sue you for getting sick for eating out of the garbage i don't see how that could even be upheld so you know and then you have people that want to barter i've talked about this before in greece i first reported on that then in spain now they're bartering and they're bartering stuff that they can find that they can steal whatever and of course bartering is illegal so they don't want you to do that they want to clamp down so you can use their little uh, central bank notes so some families go to food banks in neighboring towns so their friends and acquaintances will not see them because you know you're ashamed it says here, one Catholic charity reported in 2011 it had fed more than double the number of citizens that had assisted in 2007. But they say in Spain, freeganism is not a choice. So they're doing it to get by. Dutch unleash intelligent robot bins. Now this story makes sense because before I was wondering what was going on. No ID, no rubbish. 
The Netherlands is rolling out intelligent bins that demand identification before accepting rubbish and let the truck know when they need to be emptied, pointing towards the day when we'll all have to pay for this stuff we throw away. See? So when it gets bad, Agenda 21, Mega Cities, this brave new world, as people, as it's right in your face, and you have to go dumpster diving, like, like I've mentioned before, like Demolition Man, living underground and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there's going to be locks on there. you got to show identification to get, to get into that dumpster to throw stuff out. So, yeah, here's a little picture of these of this little can here. Okay, so moving on. Proof smart meters are being used to spy on us. It goes on and says information about the power usage, which can be used to identify when a home is being occupied, is being shared with third parties, including government agencies, uh, private organizations, and offshore data processing centers. The unethical breach of privacy was discovered on the website of one of Australia's largest electricity retailer, Origin Energy. They sign up, a customers who sign up for the online service provides the account holder with detailed information about their usage or unwillingly agreeing to share their private information with third parties. This is part of the whole plan too, to track and trace um, everything, right? Just like the bartering. That's why they want you going go in there and eating that stuff. They want everything to be tracked, including your electricity usage so you're not using too much. And of course, what, they emit ELFs, radiation, and they've been known to blow up. So, and they're forcing them on people. People don't, people don't have a choice because they don't have choices, right? They just have monopolies and duopolies. It says, U.S. rates L.A. marijuana shops. Officials send warning letters to property owners and operators of an additional 67 dispensaries, giving them two weeks to comply with federal law. So again... Are they doing this to help the public? No, this is actually harming the public's health because a lot of people will have to go to some bad shady people or get some bad shady stuff. Uh, I've, uh, you know, I've heard of people like lacing just regular pot with, uh, what is it, um, miracle Grow or using miracle Grow or using uh, rat poison, whatever, you know what I mean, to, to, uh, to make it more potent, right? So people will go like that and, and, and because it's illegal. Instead, they, they could just go and buy it, and they can help uh, heal themselves for many, many ailments, including cancer. But also, what? Hemp can repair DNA. It can uh, repair DNA damage, of course, that's being caused by all the Wi-Fi, cell phones, uh, transmission, microwave transmissions, and computers, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, radio, uh, what is it? The body scanners that untwist uh, DNA. So just like the rating of the bins, you know, this is why they do it. They have to regulate everything. They want you to be sick. They want you to have to pay a lot of money for cancer because it's a big business. And, of course, all of the reasons for it is what? Smoking. Even though Native Americans and indigenous people were smoking for a long, long time, and they'd be out in the sun, baking in the sun, living until 100-plus years old. But, hey, that's a new thing, right? World Death Organization is mulling a global cigarette tax, an excise tax of up to 70% on cigarettes at an upcoming November conference, raising concerns among free market tax policy analysts uh, about fiscal sovereignty and bureaucratic mission creep. In one place, a county is actually considering banning smoking. All of its properties outdoors, too, could become tobacco-free. Ultimately, the ban could include testing employees for tobacco use if they are covered under the county insurance plan. They see the move as a towards an environment that in the next five years will be completely tobacco-free for health reasons. So, like I said before, the cell phones, you know, they they annoy me, you know. And I if I, if I ask somebody, do you mind putting that out? And do you mind putting that off or getting that away from me? They look at me like, are you, are you nuts? Sh you know, shut up. I'm not going to listen to you. But if I was smoking next to them, oh, you know, so they got a lot of zombies out there. Uh, and they'll go, <coughs> right, just to let you know. Uh, even though you might be smoking like uh, organic tobacco with organic papers, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, whatever. The fact is, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there that get stupid over it. Cops, man, point a gun at a pregnant smoker. Nothing says I care about your baby's health like firearms. And a Washington State man was arrested this week after he allegedly pulled a gun on a smoking pregnant woman. And it says here, drive up on his pickup truck. We saw the 20 year old mom to be walking down the street. And it says here, the police say he stopped and yelled out at the window, "Who the heck smokes when they're pregnant?" And the girl said, "Well, I do." A testy exchange ensued during which the woman alleged the Palmer pulled out a gun and pointed at her. He eventually drove away without firing, and the cops later picked him up. Tobacco and tobacco giant Philip Morris plans a flu vaccine plant for China. One thing I will agree with with those people that are basically uh, annoyed by cigarettes is what? Uh, many of these cigarettes, like Marlboro, the prepackaged non-organic ones, they are like little death sticks, man. 
So, you know, they're in the eugenics industry already, so now they're just getting into vaccines. This is actually going to have a system for making vaccines in the tobacco. Makes you wonder if they're already in there. Thank you.